Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent. Sometimes viewers ask me this or that about the tools I use. This is why I picked today a few not so well known tools and show you why I use them. Of course, I do not begin with my Swiss army knife, because everybody already has one of these and know all its advantages. Let's therefore start with the one I use most, the wire stripper. I went through many of them and ended with the most simple and cheapest one. Why? Because it works. It cuts, not as most of the other designs, the insulation only on two sides. This one cuts them around the whole wire. And it needs no adjustment, because you choose just the right hole. And in addition, it is very lightweight and suits also for lefties. It works from the thickest wire I have in my lab to the thinnest one. I got mine from AliExpress, but I do not provide a link because the one I bought is no more listed and I only provide links to tested sources. The next tool has also to do with wires. What do you do with stranded wires if you cut them? For years I tinned them with my soldering iron until I detected a new way. Ferrule terminal connectors. You select the right color according the diameter of your wire, insert the wire into the terminal, insert the terminal into the self-adjusting crimper and crimp. Done. These terminals have a few advantages over tinning. First, they are much better looking and can be inserted easier into the block connectors than tinned wires. Second, crimping gives a better contact than soldering. And third, I do not need to heat up my soldering iron just to tin one or two wires. I got this set from Banggood. It contains the necessary crimper and an assortment of ferrule terminals. In different sizes from 23 AWG to 10 AWG. It will take a long time till I used all these terminals. By the way, you know that I'm Swiss and I like the metric system. But for stranded wires, I adapted the American AWG system because it is easier to keep in memory than the European square millimeter system. Let's stick with the real tools. After a few bad experiences, I bought myself a set of prying tools for different applications. I use them for example to open my standby mobile if I need to change the SIM card for my next journey abroad. Then I use it to create the hotspot for my other devices and because I use a local SIM card, I avoid roaming costs. For sure I will not use all these shapes, but I do not know now which one I will never use. You anyway will see in a future video that I love assortments. Let's continue with a tool I do not use in my lab, but on my other workbench. A step drill bit. I use it quite often for two reasons. First, for holes bigger than 10 mm because I only have normal drills up to this size. And second, for all my 3D printed parts. I try to use as much as possible things with round mounting holes for my devices. For me, this is easier to mount and usually it also looks better. Now, with 3D printing, my holes do not always get round and in exactly the right size, especially not if I have to print them vertically. This is why I usually print them smaller and use this tool to expand them to exactly the right size. Of course, it only works for soft materials like plastic and not for steel. The last real tools I want to show to you are tweezers. I bought a cheap set of them, but was never completely happy. Then I heard that Hakko produces a real good pair of tweezers. The Hakko CHP3-SA. And I only can agree. They are much more expensive, 
but also much better for smaller parts and thin wires. Shame on me, but for the moment I do not find them. This is probably because I use them quite often. The second pair of tweezers I want to show to you are self-closing. This is a very good feature if you have to solder SMD parts by hand. Then you can concentrate on the soldering hand and forget about holding the part because the tweezers take care of that. Now we continue with the liquid section. Three liquids are very important in my lab. Flux, isopropyl, alcohol and superglue. The alcohol is mainly used to clean the PCBs after soldering, but it can also be used to clean other things. My escalation of alcohol is acetone, but I do not have this one in my lab. I store the alcohol in a small bottle with a hollow needle on top. You can get these hollow needles in various diameters and they fit also on syringes, for example for SMD solder paste. If you use a thin one, you do not need to close the bottle because the alcohol nearly does not evaporate. Flux is quite important for soldering and many times it makes a big difference. Beginners sometimes forget to add flux and confuse it afterwards with lack of soldering skills. I use it in two forms, as a liquid Kester 186, also in a small bottle with a hollow needle on the top and as a pen. The pen is very handy and easy to use. The liquid is for places which are not reachable by the pen. In the past I purchased superglue in our retail store here in Switzerland, until I discovered that they charge too much for a very small amount of material. Since then I order it in China. Now I go on to the more electronic tools and start with two sorts of PCBs. First. I do not buy any more through-hole chips. I only buy the SMD version. Then I use these ready-made small PCBs and solder one or two of the purchased components on these PCBs. Together with pin headers, they perfectly fit on the breadboard and later, if I do a PCB for my devices, I still can use the SMD version. So I can purchase only one set instead of a through-hole and an SMD version. Pay attention that you get these PCBs with a proper silk screen, otherwise you always have to mark the pin 1 with a pen. They have two different sides for two different chip sizes and they come in many different sizes. I bought a few of the sizes I most often use. The next sort of PCBs are prototype PCBs without any connections between the holes. I use them to build small devices or sensors with only a few parts and at the end I cut it out using a jigsaw. If the device consists of many parts I usually mill a PCB. Now last but not least I will show you a thing called transistor tester. This is one of the most used tools because I cannot reliably read the code of the more precise resistors. Sometimes these colors are hard to distinguish. So I use this device to be sure about the real value. But it is also helpful if you get a shipping from China and you want to make sure it is not a fake. Or you forgot to properly name a part before storing it away. I have it in two versions and I have given both of them a small 3D printed home. In addition to transistors, diodes, resistors and capacitors, the newer one also measures inductivity. This is why I bought it as a second device. But if you buy one now, the new one is sufficient. The last tool I would like to mention is my brother P-Touch label printer. I use these labels everywhere, on my bins, on my project boxes, even on my ESPs. And because Brother uses the HP printer pricing model, where you get the printer cheaply and pay for the expensive cartridges, I did not pay too much for it. I even bought the more expensive one with a USB interface. So I can create the labels on the PC. 
and since I can buy knockoff cartridges, this is really a good deal. These cartridges do not have the same quality as the original, but for my purpose they are okay. As usual you find all the links in the comments below. That's all for today. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye.